Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. We are so excited to be here with you because so we are back at it with the brow. Our favorites. We are deep. Well, episode two into <laughs> season five. We are doing our sister wives archival rewind. journey, the rewind. We are looking at this family through the filter of 2012. Yeah. And there's a lot to see. A lot. And a lot to judge. <laughs> oh, so much. And we're just the raccoons to do it. Yes. Now, before we get into it, we do want to give you our disclaimer, please. Hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We say a lot of bad words. We have dumb opinions that you might not like. And so if you're sensitive, you might want to find yourself another dumpster, baby. But if you're down and open-minded and ready to talk about some Mormons, welcome to this dumpster. And if you are down, open-minded, and trashy AF, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon, <gasps> patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. That's where all of the juicy trash is at, okay? Yes, ma'am. Mm. Also, if you are watching on YouTube, please don't forget to like and comment and share and subscribe because we mean it when we say everything that you do helps us to grow and we're Thank trying you. to grow. Like we are in a quest to get to 4,000 subscribers <laughs> On YouTube. on YouTube, I believe it's possible. I believe I can fly. I believe. I, I can believe fly. we can do it. And so, For if you real. like this and if you share it, all you have to do really is like even just hit share and Please. click the link. You don't even have to share it with anybody. Yeah. For real. For real. Yeah. You could just copy it and youtube thinks you want to share it exactly. and now more raccoons are coming into the dumpster. Thank you. So if you could do that, we would really appreciate Thanks. it. Thank you. In advance yes now i also want to say that if you hear a hum or a roar in the background no one it's can hear it. our air conditioner because yeah. it's hot we live in texas bitch yeah and it's hot up in here you got all these lights in here i'm in a sweatshirt for some unknown reason it's <laughs> always because i'm fat no you're not you're hiding your sugar it's body it's my sugar body i don't want to show it to everybody only my man you're beautiful only shut my up man gets to see all <laughs> that but it's hot and yeah. so the AC's on and that's what you're hearing. Don't come for me, bro. Yeah. Chill okay. out, okay? Audio let's files. Get into, <laughs> let's get into Sister Wives, episode, f no, see, season five, episode two, entitled Cody Begs for an Answer. I beg you. I beg you. I beg you for an answer. Who is Please. he begging for an answer? From Mary. Oh, God. Will you let me put a baby in you? I can't with Please. these two people. I can't with Mary on the couch crying oh again God. about IVF. Somebody so annoying. put a bullet in me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, for real, though. It's Jesus. like, how much do we have to see? This? Five seasons now we've been asking this yeah, question. I don't care. I don't care at also, all. Also, I know the answer. And so this yeah. is terrible. It's so dumb. And I think it goes into like season eight or something oh, like that. Oh, Lord Jesus. It's ridiculous. Help. So we start this episode with kind of like a weird discussion of the OG wives and Cody talking about how traditionally uh, polygamous fathers are pieces of shit and they don't want to be associated with their kids because if they are, then they'll be outed as polygamists. Now, they didn't present it like that, Basically. Th that the fathers were pieces of shit. It was just well, that was one of dangerous yeah. to be public and to admit that you had more than one wife because well, it is a crime yeah. in Utah. And Christine told us, she reminded us that her grandfather was yeah. actually separated from his wives and he went to jail and they never got back together. And so Which she's so traumatized. Nice. She has some ancestral trauma around it. Well, here's the solution don't live this lifestyle <laughs> if it's a crime but it's a tenet of their religion i know and so yeah, you're judging yeah. their faith and that's their fundamentalist not enlightened faith. Yes. yeah i'm gonna judge it well but the browns are different and you know why because they wanted to go public because they are not going to apologize for being polygamists yeah in that's fact great. it is time for parent teacher conferences yeah and not just school. cody and the appropriate mother is going to show up to those conferences all no cody and all of the mothers all four wives are going to each teacher to talk about all their children. That's cringe. Now, listen, I don't know 
what high school does parent teacher conferences but my mom didn't show up to any parent teacher conferences <laughs> after like grade three so i don't know yeah, i mean i remember having them when my daughter was in elementary yeah, school i don't remember a parent teacher conference in high school i never had any in high school I mean, but maybe it's because I was a good kid and I had good grades. Some you were of these in the kids, natural, natural. You were in the National Honor Society, I was, so it was like given Leon. that you were good. Yeah, yeah. I was. Um, but some of these kids are not doing well. Namely, um, what was it, Aspen? Not going to class? Christine doesn't think she has to go to school because she, her grades are fine. Like, if her grades were faltering, of course I would send her to school. Wow. But, like, she can afford to miss a few days. So I don't mind if she stays home. Okay. Oh, my God. Reminders of me. I was going to say, Reminders. you were totally like that with Only for your daughter. her in ninth grade. Yeah. Because we moved to this place in Colorado and the drive. <laughs> I had to, there wasn't a bus or anything. I had to drive her to school. She said she never went on the public school bus. No. Which is wild to me because that's how, that's the only way I got to school. No, I drove her ass. <laughs> wow. And I picked her up either I did or my mother did. Wow. Like we took her, we brought her back. But like when we moved to Colorado, that was like a half an hour drive. <laughs> and I was like up late. I was just partying. Right. I was partying. partying and Dating. I'm like, oh, Jesus, I got to wake up at six o'clock, <laughs> get my kid to school. That's so you. Let's too. take a day off. Didn't you have like truancy warnings? They yeah. called me once. They're like, um, excuse me, <laughs> but your daughter does need to come to school. She's a freshman in high school. It's important that she shows up. I'm like, okay. Well, then she said her senior year, she was like barely there too. Because all she took was choir. Well, that's on her because yeah. we live next door to the high school. Well, yeah. So that if she was cutting, I didn't know about it. Well, that's it. typical of like senior year anyway, though. Yeah. Like, a lot I mean, of my friends were not there. It is a hallmark of a not shit parent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to not take the kid to um, school. Yeah. And so that's Christine. That was also me. I was going through a divorce and yeah. I don't need that from you. Thank you. <laughs> but like, that's not cool. And Mary sure. even says like, that's causing problems in my With home. With Leon. Because Leon sees that Aspen doesn't have to go to school and now Leon wants to stay home. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Absolutely not. You go to school. That's what school is for. Also, Leon, you're in the National Honor Society. So yeah. if you want to continue to be in that, you got to go to school and be yeah. a good kid. I know that because I was in it. <laughs> just kidding. And that's just part of the deal. You've got to go no, to school. Real. Yeah. Who knew? Yeah. It's a law. <laughs> and then we also see um, Hunter's teacher. We talk about Hunter, like and not I'm adjusting. Snoring. I loved McKelty's teacher. Oh, my God. Because Talking about <laughs> this is where we learn. <laughs> <laughs> this is so funny. That McKelty <laughs> wants to be a world famous. A world famous. Fashion designer. Not just a fashion designer, but a world famous fashion designer because she's just fascinated by how all these pieces of fabric just become a shirt <laughs> how does it even have what kind of all these alchemy is involved it's amazing all these fabrics just become a shirt and then to know that she actually goes on to sell lularoe i know the most trash bag of <laughs> all fashions is awesome it's amazing truly it's awesome i do love hearing these cringy teenagers talk about their dreams because I mean, we all have these like dumb dreams. Like I wanted to be a neurosurgeon when I was 15, 16. And then I turned 18 and I was like, oh, I got to go to school for 12 years. <laughs> Fuck that. Yes, no, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you at all. But I know I was talking like that as a kid. I was like, yeah, I love like learning how people's brains work. It's like just so fascinating to me. <laughs> Until so I have dumb. to apply myself and also get student <laughs> loans for the next 20 years of my life. And now I'm here right. talking about people on TV. In a wig, girl. In a wig. Looking fire, though. I mean, it. what do you think I wanted to be when I grew up when I was a kid? Oh, my God. I don't know. Take a wild a guess. A singer. Kind of. Yeah? I wanted to be a pastor. Oh, my God. Stop. <laughs> I wanted to be a pastor. That's actually kind of cute, though. It, and I... Kind of you kind of did. Up, I kind of ended up that yeah. way. Not that this is a church, although it could be. Well, you it did would in be your the other best business. Church. Yeah. Yes, but don't talk about it. What? Don't talk. Only the patrons know oh. about that other business. But I did. I wanted to be a pastor. Oh my god! I wanted to guide a flock, like Lydia Plath, to on Jesus. fire for Jesus. Sold out and radical, baby. I love it. But anyway, so they go from teacher to teacher. We meet all these 
basic people. Yeah. And we learn about their kids and how much they're blah, thriving blah, blah. in high school. But it's really just an opportunity for Cody to be on camera and shove their polygamy down the throats mm -hmm. of people who weren't asking for it. I know. <laughs> really cringy, honestly. Yeah. yeah. And then we get into kind of the more interesting parts of the episode yes. where we have Mary getting an email from Mona <gasps> about her hobby room and her pantry. So they're in the process of building their homes, designing their homes, figuring out what they want in their homes. And Mary wants a hobby room and a pantry and also a wet bar. But the only way that she can get those things is if she has a fifth bedroom. Oh, no. Mary has to have more space in her house. <gasps> what am I going to do? What is she going to do? Because I absolutely need my hobby room, which was the first time that I heard about <laughs> like, a hobby what? room. And can't you do like the rest of us do out here and just convert one of your bedrooms into your office or your hobby room? I guess Hello. not. I guess you need a hobby room. A separate one. At a pantry, which is awesome. I mean, I would love a pantry. Right. But... What she really wants is the wet bar uh -huh. because she loves to entertain. <laughs> I mean, I'm so into entertaining and I want all of the kids to feel like they have a place in my house uh -huh. and we have so many children and I want the room so that they can come over and spend the night and be in my house. Even though nobody ever comes over to your house? Nobody so? even likes you, Mary. No one likes None you. None of these kids like you because when they become adults, they say that you abuse them. Yeah. So they don't want to spend the night in your house. And uh, why do you need a wet bar? So now let's get into this. Let's get into it. Because I don't understand. Because Janelle took great pains to tell us last week, and I think the week before, that the way the Browns do it is they agree that each wife gets a budget and it's equal to the other wife. It doesn't matter, matter if you have one kid or if you have six kids, all the wives have the same budget. Yeah. So... Mary wanting this hobby room and this wet bar presumably exists within her budget, her equal portion or share. Mm -hmm. So why would Janelle and anybody else, Christine, anybody else in the family be upset with Mary getting a wet bar if it's part of her budget? I don't see this is where we were, I'm kind of debating like whether or not it was part of the budget. I feel like it's more because Janelle is talking about how she needs to cut back like oh i don't need a dining room right i don't need it so that's insinuating that her house mary's house is going to cost a lot of fucking money so janelle of course has to be the one that makes the sacrifices and probably christine too but if it is in the budget mm -hmm. then i think everyone's just bitter about the fact that mary wants a big expensive house and that they don't feel right. like she deserves it because christine even says she admits that she thinks that Mary should have a smaller house. Yeah, you don't af actually have a legitimate need for a large house. You have you one don't. child. You don't need all that shit. No. But this is what gets me wondering if what Mary is asking for is more than her portion. Because yeah. why should it bother Janelle? If she signed off and agreed that every wife gets their equal portion. What She even said like one or two episodes ago, I don't care what you do with your budget. Like do what the fuck you want to do. I'm just concerned with what I'm doing in my house. So why is she upset unless is Mary asking the family to contribute more toward the wet bar? She might be. And toward that fifth bedroom. She might be. And I mean, she just said last episode, or was it the end of season four, where she's like, I've got expensive taste. I'm crying. I've got expensive taste. I like nice things because I take care of my things and they last for years. Because you no have no kids. Them. You exactly. don't have kids running all over your things like exactly. the rest of these mothers. And that's why their things don't last. So my feeling is she must be asking for a bit more in yep. order to get her fucking wet bar. Which is so fucked Now up. we know that behind the scenes, Mary probably wants this wet bar because they are into MLM marketing and so maybe they host people over to their house and they pitch them and I've been unfortunately involved in some of those pitches and it's a real bummer yeah but so she's envisioning herself behind this beautiful granite wet bar pitching somebody towards their MLM market scheme cringe but you don't need a wet bar for that like I had a McMansion of my own she did. and I had a wet bar and I also had an island and it's redundant yeah and you're a Mormon right and like you said earlier you don't drink no so what are you serving from your wet bar that you can't serve from your island exactly and by the way aesthetically speaking it's ugly that wet bar is basic AF it's ugly AF furthermore 
get yourself into the house with four bedrooms and then install your own wet bar. No, for real. You can put something really nice in there if you really need that for yourself. You don't need that to be in the blueprints. I don't understand why she's fixating on this horse shit. Beatrice because she wants the bigger house that's the thing like we talked about it I think a little bit last episode that these are all based on like the builders plans like they're not going to build four separate ultra customized homes like they have these set plans I think Mary's picking the bigger house of the plans because she wants a big nice beautiful house because she's like Cody in that way like she wants this image she wants to look like she's got all these nice things it's like why Cody gets the fucking stupid Lexus from his MLM bullshit rose gold. oh my god it's rose gold because it's a convertible and it's amazing like they're so self-centered whereas like janelle and maybe christine like they don't give a fuck like just give me a house that has enough space for all of my kids but the fact that janelle feels the need to take away from her house to accommodate mary and all of this space that she literally doesn't need is wild to me and then we see it even in season 18 where robin's got this fucking mcmansion and janelle's having to live in an rv on the property or rent a house or just fight to have a casita just so she has something it's just it's messed up to me it's very messed up. And I'm just wondering how Mary in this moment has the audacity to try to pull the wool over everybody's Wild. eyes. Because when they're on the couch, she's framing it like, I I, I have no choice. <laughs> like, the only way I can get my hobby room and my pantry and my whip are is if we get this fifth bedroom. Yeah. And so that's what I have to do. Like, what am I supposed to do? I can't compromise. How about not get the fifth bedroom, wait a year or two like the rest of humanity and install it yourself at your own expense. I mean, it's pay wild. for that shit yourself. Now, so I don't know. The question is being raised, like, do the other wives have to take from their budget or the family budget in order to subsidize Mary? Or I think so. is Janelle just pissed and stank faced about the fact that she doesn't get to have a wet bar? She doesn't mm -hmm. get to have all of these options. She doesn't even get to have a dining room. But yep. here's Mary like, oh, my God, I want this and I want that and I can have this and I can have that. And is that the foundation of the entire problem? Because if that's the problem. Honestly, and I and I hate to say it, everybody, but Janelle, you got to get over that shit because you all agreed as a family that everybody gets an equal share and Mary can do what the fuck she wants with her equal share. But if Mary's asking for more and saying, I cannot help it, I need to entertain. And if that's coming from the family fund, well, then, yeah, that's that's a problem. I think it is coming from the family fund and it's coming from Janelle's fund so that she's getting bitter. That's what I think. And maybe Janelle's the only one that actually thinks about saving money or like cutting corners so they have a little bit of extra money. Meanwhile, everybody else is just taking the full amount of their share and just spending it all and maybe adding on a little bit extra. And that's fucked up. Like these adults are so irresponsible and they should, as a family, like as a joint family, they should only take what they need and then save the mm -hmm. rest. But they're not going to do that because they're dumb. So it's just, I don't know. I yeah. think it, I think Mary's selfish AF. I think she's very selfish. I think she knows she's being selfish, yep. which is why she's victim crying on the couch about having eight children that she can't actually have and Could how she's making it about the amount of children versus the amount of resources that she's actually right. taking. And I can see why Janelle would be like, just get a smaller house. Like it's the same builder. Just get the building plans for the smallest house because that's literally all you need and, it's and maybe there'll be an, a little bit extra so i can have a fucking dining room yeah. or maybe i can get that fifth or that sixth bedroom because i have nine thousand children like why don't you think about everybody else why are you always just thinking about yourself that's the thing which mary knows that about herself yep but she can't admit it because she's proud af yep I she hate wants it. what she wants a what a wet bar oh, to entertain nobody because nobody's going to come over to your house not even cody yikes yikes and then we have logan's graduation so it starts off with everybody being chaotic and disorganized as usual as fuck the browns can never get anything together nobody can be an adult in this family cody texts janelle and tells her nobody knows what we're doing can you give us some details about, I don't know, the location of the graduation, what time we got to be there, how long it's going to be there? I guess, according to Cody, Janelle's not giving those details out. Do we believe that? Mm, not necessarily. I mean, the way Janelle 
describes it as like we've had these conversations. I've kind of told everybody what it's about. I just assumed everybody knew, but no problem. Here's where you have to be and here's what time. But it sounds like Cody wrote her and said, this is all your fault. Like we're yeah. so fucking disorganized. No, the reality is you're always disorganized. Every Anytime you. you go anywhere, whether it's on vacation or whether you're relocating, you are getting flats every 10 miles. You guys can't leave on time. You guys are a mess. Yep. And that's just the way you are. All the time. They're always like that. So all of the adults besides Robin are going to the stadium and they're getting there on time for Logan's graduation. Robin, apparently, planned to arrive late because she didn't want to sit there for hours and hours with King Solomon on her lap crying because he's a baby. He's a wee zygote. Yes. So she planned to be late. Didn't tell everybody else that she planned to be late because Christine didn't know. Christine, at the graduation, is kind of mad at Robin because this is a very important day. Duh. It's the eldest child's graduation. Well, she even says it on the couch. She, she calls Robin out, which I thought was a thing of beauty. So She's like, good. oh, I didn't realize that you made a plan not to be there on time. And it was really shocking to me because this is a very important day. Our little Logan is graduating. And Robin just sits there on the couch with her mouth open like... <laughs> how dare you bitch call me out in front of everybody now here's the thing i 100 percent understand robin not wanting to take king solomon who's i think i don't know seven six or seven months old at this point sure for four hours to some hot ass stadium with ten thousand people in attendance and have to wrangle her child i get it she wants to leave a little later but get there in time but what i do recall from my time spent on Reddit. Like I've seen this situation come up before and having like people discuss it. Like a lot of people think that Robin did this on purpose. I that she so. showed up late on purpose and that she kind of made a spectacle, a scene on purpose. Not necessarily that she missed the graduation on purpose, but that she wanted to be late to draw attention to herself. Mm. I don't know if I buy that. I think not? she wanted to be late because she didn't want to spend time with everybody there for mm. four hours. I mean, because graduations are long. Yeah. They're so arduous. They're so boring. Yeah, they have, suck. They're so terrible. So I get like not wanting to be there with the baby. But just last episode, we met your sister, Tara Lise, who's been babysitting your kids oh, for you. My, you're right. So I don't understand why you couldn't have had her babysit yeah, Solomon. Yeah, are the rest of your children, are Brianna and a rah, 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 and Dayton Like, there? where are they at? They're not there. I don't know that I saw them. Maybe I don't think they were, they were there, there. Or was it just the older kids? They're at home, I think. So I'm like, you have babysitters i'm sure a lot of the other kids also stayed home because i think some of the older kids showed up like maddie was there um i think leon was hunter there. was there hunter was there so like i'm sure there could have been other people that could have watched the kids truly wasn't there You're so right. truly was being watched by somebody i don't know who so the whole like excuse that it's for the kid that's stupid we'll get that out of the way i think she. i did mean it. actually it's very reasonable well but if you have babysitters if it's true yeah, but you do have babysitters, that's true. Like, like, if you didn't have child care. If you didn't have child care, you would not want to spend four hours in a stadium. I get that. For sure. But you're absolutely, and I had forgotten, you're absolutely right about Tara Lise. She's living with Robin. She could be taking care of the baby and all of the kids. So, like, what is the problem? But the way Robin frames it when she's talking about it is she's like, I purposefully chose to hang back, you know, and, and arrive a little later, but then... Mary called me all frantic because she forgot her camera and she asked me to get my camera and hurry up down to the stadium as if that somehow threw a wrench in her plans and so it screwed her up because it's your camera it's in your home why is that like a hard thing to do but according to Robin she gets in her car she gets in her hoopty <laughs> she gets Solomon in his baby seat and yeah. she heads on over to the stadium but she gets lost uh -huh. and I'm like I'm looking with my own eyes on the TV at the size of that stadium. And I'm just wondering, like, how are you getting lost and not seeing it with your eyes? Like, <laughs> I don't get it. I'm sure there are signs. I'm sure there's people directing you where to go. Yeah. Like, my college graduation was in the middle of downtown Fort Worth. It was super confusing. It was in a big old stadium. But there were signs. There were people directing people. Yeah. So, like, I don't know. Whatever. She gets she lost. She got lost. But the whole camera thing doesn't make sense either because Mary was recording on a camera mm -hmm. before Robin got there, recording 
Logan's name being called. So she had a camera. So I so don't know. Robin's making excuses because she left later than she should have. Mm-hmm. And maybe she got lost and she didn't plan to like try to find the place and she didn't right. know where she was going. And or what some people think is like she deliberately showed up 15 minutes late to cause a spectacle. So everybody turns as she's walking down the stairs. Everyone's seated except for Robin, Queen Robin, mm-hmm. oh, coming down the stairs with her baby. Yeah. Mad as hell oh so she's not happy that jaw of hers was all it's already a strong jaw very hard this jaw is tight it is hard she's pissed off and then she brings that fucking energy to everybody who's already discombobulated yep she brings that energy to everybody and cody even says yeah it was like a wet blanket over everybody because robin was so unhappy that she missed logan graduating and of course she goes into immediate victim mode like i love him so much okay and i wanted to see him walk across the stage whatever but i missed it <laughs> oh my god oh, god it's so dumb to me too because they show up like she wanted to show up late for his name calling but i'm like his l- last name is literally brown it's, it's at the beginning. the beginning it's at the top of the literally sequence literally at the top so like it would have been called right away to begin with but whatever, these people are stupid. And like Cody even almost missed Logan's graduation because he's running around with his hair flopping. Looking in the for air, Robin. Looking for trying Robin. Trying to find her and guide her to her seat. And even when like he gets back to the, their spots and everything after Robin's like pulled up in the parking lot, like Janelle gets distracted and misses Logan's name being called. Mm-hmm. And she gets emotional by it. And I actually felt bad for her. She cries. She cries. And mm-hmm. I feel like that's a total valid reaction because this is your eldest kid this is the first graduation out of Mm -hmm. all of them yeah and you miss his name being called she's the only one that misses it too besides robin yeah (laughs) another thing that i noticed was when they were at janelle's house all disorganized trying to get everybody out the door hunter was doing his hair she's having a conversation with janelle's having a conversation with either logan or maddie and they're asking where dad is and she's like and they're like at robin's and she's like, yeah, Robin's. So I didn't notice that. Cody's at Robin's house on the eve of Logan's graduation. So he's not even with Janelle and Janelle's whole family, all of his kids with Logan, helping that morning, getting everybody together, getting everybody out the door. He's sending Janelle a text instead, getting up her ass because nobody knows what the fuck they're supposed to be doing. But he's at Robin's house. Wow. And Thus begins the cycle. I mean, it's probably been in effect this entire time since Vegas, but thus begins the the cycle of Cody conspicuously being with Robin. Wow, I didn't even notice that. Good catch. Yeah. That's really fucked up. Wouldn't, I mean, if this were all like healthy and they were all on the same page, like wouldn't you as the dad want to be in the same house of the child that's graduating, like helping him get ready and helping him get out the door? That doesn't make any sense. No, he's with Robin. No. And he's not even comforting Janelle at during the graduation when she's crying because she missed his name. Like he's literally doesn't give a shit and doesn't even look at her. So it's just it's just showing how like he doesn't care about anybody but Robin and her breakdancing pussy and King Solomon. And that sucks because mm-hmm. your eldest child's graduating. Mm-hmm. And you're more worried about Robin being late because she's dumb and chose to be late. Mm-hmm. She chose to Period. arrive late. That's it. It Period. just sucks. She either did it because she's dumb and she didn't plan ahead, which is probably what happened, or she did it because she wanted all eyes on her, which also is possible because she's a malignant narcissist. I think she probably didn't plan to be 15 minutes late. She probably didn't plan to get lost. What do y'all think? Yeah, let us know in the comments yeah. what your theories are. But yeah, that was all messed up. Everybody's upset because they were so disorganized. I'm like, get it together. I mean, how many years have we had children? Logan's 18 at this point. Y'all have been doing this for 18 years with your multiple kids going on vacations because they were just on vacation before he graduates, mm-hmm. right? So they're just back from a week-long vacation. You guys have moved around. You guys know the deal. Yeah. You know what it takes to caravan this entire family for from point A to point B, like, why haven't you figured out a system or a protocol before now, before a very important date and event to get your shit together? You, all these adults and no one's responsible, literally nobody besides Janelle, who's working to provide for this whole family by now in Vegas. Like, that's so messed up to me. That'd be so frustrating. And she probably did mention it to Robin, which I think she probably. says, I mentioned it to like some of the moms. Like, yeah. they should know too. 
But like she probably mentioned it to people mm-hmm. and just hoped that people would be self-starters, write it in their fucking day planner yeah. and know where they needed to be. But no, I got to handhold. I got to make sure everybody is doing what they're supposed to be doing. I would be exhausted too. Just last episode, Janelle's like, what would happen if I just left? I mean, really? What would happen to this fucking family? I just ran if away. If I just bounced. See, and this whole thing, I'm going to go uncensored. Okay. All right. We are back from uncensored. By the way, if you want to hear our uncensored bits, you have to be a patron on Patreon. Patreon.com slash reality TV cringe. But yeah, like, come on, adults. It's Get it together. Incumbent upon you to figure out how to organize your goddamn selves. Even just your pod, Janelle, your six kids, Christine, your five kids, uh, Robin, your four kids. Like, figure out how to get to places on time. Because we see in the preview for next week when they go to hang out with the Darchers, yeah. Darkers, whoever they are, the guy actually says, the only thing that's going to piss me off browns brown family is if you say we're going to leave at eight but we end up leaving at 10 yeah so he puts them on notice immediately which tells us and we already knew that this is a pattern of behavior that this is the kind of shit that they don't just do with themselves but they visit their horseshit on other people to get it together it's so disrespectful and so lame and so immature like you guys are in your 40s you're God. of a big age. Get it together. Be an adult. I'd be like, bye. I'll see you when I see you. And I don't Ugh. care. I am uh, detaching. For real. And then after the whole graduation fiasco, then we have Mary visiting her sister Elaine. <sighs> talking about her infertility issues again. Because Elaine has also struggled with infertility, <sighs> but she just had her own baby. Uh-huh. So Mary's there to kind of have the conspicuous on-camera conversation because we, for some reason, need to continue to talk about... (laughs) Wake up! (laughs) Get the paddles! Clear! We need to talk about Mary at the ripe old age of, I don't know, 40, 41, 42, 43, having another baby with Cody. When we all know now that Cody didn't want to have this child with her. Cody, as he claims it in 2024, never loved Mary or Ever, any of his other apparently. wives. So he doesn't want to have this kid, but he still persists in having this conversation on the couch with Mary about whether she's going to say yes <laughs> to IVF. And I don't understand. Like, I, help me to understand why Mary has to cry here, why she has to talk about, I'm just so confused one day I want to have another baby and then the next day I don't know and I'm just so confused and Cody says on the couch you know I get that it's a big decision and Mary's like I don't think you get it (laughs) and cries I'm like shut the fuck up Uh, fuck up lady for real make a goddamn decision and stop torturing me with your bullshit once again be an adult and put your big girl panties on and make the hard decision. It's like... You're a senior citizen. The answer is no. <laughs> You're a senior citizen. The answer is no. Well, I was just thinking, maybe she... Is she like in perimenopause? Is she in menopause could right be. now? Like, she is could that be. maybe like contributing to like her emotions with it? Like the back and forth of it all? I don't know. It feels to me performative. Like uh. she's got to put herself in this victim position. Like she likes to be in a victim position. Like yeah. I just, people are judging me and oh, I don't God. want the emotions of it. Yeah. Now, you know, now she's on the couch talking about her infertility. And I think she knows right in this moment she doesn't want another children, another child. Then just fucking admit it. No, she wants to stretch it out Ugh, because she so gets annoying. to be the center of attention. And she also gets Cody paying attention to her continuing to ask this question well guess what cody is gonna not give a shit no he doesn't care and like gonna stop asking like i said i think this goes on until like season seven or eight because i think she referenced it in season 18 where they had like another like conversation about it and that was when she officially tells cody at like fucking 45 46 yeah now i don't want to have a kid you think duh like you think (laughs) it's so dumb like and like i've been saying like i understand it's a difficult decision to make initially like in season one season two mary i get it okay like i understand the indecision but we're in season five now right (laughs) what are we doing and i'm literally tired of it the first season you went to mexico on your anniversary and we done had this conversation Mm -hmm. my friend like i'm tired of it it's it's not interesting to me at all but that's the that's the novelty of Sister Wives. Yeah. It's really not a very interesting, like no. on the surface, yeah. it's not a very interesting program. Like who cares? 
honestly about yeah. teacher parent teacher conferences i don't care but like it's the stuff beneath the layers that we were all so intuitive about with our monocles yeah sussing out the entire time but i'm over mary yep and i want her to shut up and me the wet bar is bothering me it's an ugly ass fucking wet Body. bar basic as fuck ugly and shut up about it already <laughs> But unfortunately, shut up, Mary. <laughs> the entire season and maybe next season, she's going to be talking about it. Oh, yeah. And I think in this season, we get into more of My Sister Wife's Closet, too. So we're going to have a double whammy of Oof. Mary Bring and then on. Robin with the whole My Sister Wife's Closet, which is going to be so good. Ooh, we eating good in the dumpster. We are eating so we good. Are eating so great. So there was the preview with the Dargers or Dargers. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Mm -hmm. This is a dude who's married to twin sisters, which is not a fetish at all. Yeah, like, no, that's not, not, at not all. something you get on porn at all. No, yeah. Like, why would you even think that? That's dirty. Yikes. It's dirty of you to think. Yeah. Um, and they talk about their holy polygamous marriage. Uh -huh. And I think the conversation about how they share a kitchen is going to happen. And then Cody makes a statement in which he says that I have two wives who consider it literal abuse to share a kitchen. And then we end the preview with them on the couch with Mary crying again, Jesus, fuck, crying again, saying, I know Janelle feels like I abused her. Well, I can see it. I want to know more. I can see it. What is the context? I feel like Mary's a bully. I'm, I think Mary was a bully, especially yep. in those early years. And so maybe they're going to talk about some of this. Please. Because again, I haven't watched these seasons. So I'm me excited either. to learn more. Tell me more about how you Please. abused Janelle. I want to hear all about it. Oh, good stuff. Oh, so good. All right. Is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons before we get up on out of here, Beatrice? <sighs> Well, if you love our podcast, I sure hope you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five-star review. Ah! It really helps us grow the pod so we can get famous. Thank you. We will be back later this week to talk Welcome to Plathville and maybe Unexpected if we have the time. So make yeah. sure you come back for that. And until then, please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you. And peace out. Bye. Bye, guys.